things that can be overwhelming about Excel is that there are sometimes two, three, or four, sometimes even more different ways to carry out a given task. So we're going to see four different ways to, to widen our columns here. Not that you'll necessarily need all four ways, but each one has its own benefit there. So one of the first ways that you can adjust a column width, and probably the, the longest approach to do so, would be to select column A. Step two, we would go to the format command on Excel's home menu. And then step three, we could say auto fit column width. And if we made that choice, that would take that column width and widen it so we could see the word interest rate in its entirety. So that approach works fine. I'm going to show you a nuance, though. Notice that the first step was to select column A. In certain cases, you might forget to select the entire column. You might just pick, you might, your cursor might be in cell B, cell B2, where we just have the word term, and we're going to find Excel won't carry out the task the way that you expected it. So in addition to selecting the column and then to making a menu command choice there, you could instead put your cursor in between the, the gap between two columns, such as between column A and column B. When you hover over that space there, your cursor will change to a double-headed arrow. If you then double-click while you have that double-headed arrow, Excel will then automatically widen the entire column. So that's actually the fastest and easiest way to widen columns. Of course, fast and easy sometimes comes back around to haunt us because many times, particularly reports these days that we dump out of a software, at the bottom of the report, there's sometimes this legal disclaimer narrative that gets appended down at the bottom. And that legal, dis that paragraph of text is in column A, so if we go to widen column A, what we might encounter is that column A suddenly shoots up, is wider than the screen size that we have, because in order to, to, to display all that text, because that text makes it, 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 Excel is widening the column in order to display that whole paragraph of text in a single column. And you can put Excel in a state where you then can't see the right-hand side of the column width there to be able to make it smaller. So an alternative that we always have is we can right-click on a column. And right-clicking on things is a great idea in Excel because wherever you right-click, you will get a context-specific menu that gives you a collection of commands that are used most frequently in that area of the spreadsheet. So for instance, when I right-click on a column, I'll have a choice to adjust the column width. Now, when I do choose column width, it brings up a column width dialog box where I can type in a number there. And at first, those numbers might be, you might think, well, why do I care the exact number? Sometimes in Excel, we want to make column widths all be a specific size. And so we can select two or more columns at the same time and set that column width to a specific number and click OK. And then those columns will all be exactly the same size. But also, in Excel, I'm going to purpose, purposely make the column too wide so I can't get to the edge of it. And I'll show you that you could then just shrink it back down to some small number, such as 10, to get that column back under control there. So let's look at our column widths here. We're going to click on column A initially. We'll go on the Home menu first, going over to the Format command. And then we're coming down, and we're looking for Auto Fit Column Width. So when I click on that choice, notice Excel made column A wide enough to show me everything that's in column A. And that's what we'd expect, but here's one of those nuancy things. Let's say I put that column width back. Let's say that rather than clicking on column A, instead I'm at my cursor's in cell A2. And so I go up to format, I come down, I choose auto fit column width. Notice Excel in this case, did what I told it to versus what I intended. What I intended was for Excel to make that column be as wide as the widest entry. But that's not what I asked for. By, by not selecting the entire column, instead by selecting a cell where there's only four letters in it, by choosing auto fit column width, Excel made it only wide enough to display whatever it is in cell A2. So these are the little nuancy things that make people think that they don't know what they're doing in Excel. 
in this case, if we're adjusting a col column width, if we work from the from the worksheet frame by first clicking on the entire column and then choosing auto fit column width, then it will make it as wide as the entire column. But let's say that we did something, we did that, or, or let's say that we did our double click trick here. So if we took our cursor and positioned it in between there, if I double click in between two columns, that too makes the entire column, it fits the widest entry. But let's say that my column width resize itself because sometimes there's some data I didn't expect. Notice here that column A is running off the screen there. And so I can't get to the edge of column A. I can't double click and make it smaller. That's where I can always right click on the column and come down and choose column width. And so if I change that column width, let's say back to 10, that will make it smaller. So I can also manually adjust the column width by dragging. So I could grab on the edge here and drag and resize it. But I don't find myself dragging and resizing column widths very often because usually I just want to make it just be exactly wide enough for that data. And double clicking there will let me do that. So a lot more nuance than you might think involved in just managing column widths there.